Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. I'm Surya Gangadharan. President Trump is due in India tomorrow and I have with me Jeff Smith of the American Heritage Foundation uh, to talk about some of the uh, aspects of his visit. Um, no trade deal, is that a bad thing, a good thing or it's okay? It would be hard to describe it as a good thing. <laughs> um, I think it is a point of frustration for the American side. Uh, I think most people would have preferred to see some kind of trade deal get done. Um, it's been under several years now of grueling negotiations, yeah. and I think it would have gone a long way toward addressing some complaints on the U.S. side. Uh, but I don't think it's a total wash. Uh, I'm very glad the president decided to move forward with the visit without it. And in fact, uh, I argued earlier last year the number one objective would be to avoid a trade war between India and the U.S., and particularly a Section 301 investigation in the U.S., and we have managed to avoid a trade war. So the first objective has been met. Now the second objective is to actually get a modest deal done. Uh, and I do hope that in the months ahead or maybe next year, uh, we are able to accomplish that feat. But it is a small point of frustration that we weren't able to do that this visit. Do you think um, the sentiment in the US uh, over the, um I mean, you've struck a trade, trade deal with China, despite a trade war. Yes. Uh, in that sense, India is seen as recalcitrant, stubborn, unreasonable. What's the view? Well, I think there are two very different circumstances. Uh, I think our grievances with China were much greater than they are with India. And I also think it's important to recognize that the trade deal we struck with China was more an agreement to get us back to a place that we were um, several months into the trade deal. So it was almost as if we regained some ground uh, that we had lost in the last three years due to the trade war, rather than making very significant step forward with China. Um, and so I think the, the trade deal with China needs to be contextualized. It's supposed to be just the first phase in many phases. Yeah. So for that deal to be considered a success, I think we still have quite a ways to go. Uh, but we were able to reach some agreement, and that is significant. And I think it would be better for perceptions of India-U.S. relations if we were able to at least achieve a, a similarly modest agreement moving forward. So given the absence of any trade thing happening, uh, would you say the defense, the strategic cooperation is really the bedrock of the relationship? Yes, and I would argue that that's really been the case from the beginning. Uh, since the relationship really began to take off in the mid-2000s with President Bush. Um, it's the area where we have the greatest convergence, the greatest alignment, where we see eye to eye on the challenges, uh, but also on the opportunities. And so it's not a surprise to me that, that the defense strategic relationship remains the bedrock. It's, in my personal opinion, the most important aspect of the relationship. But it is also important to broaden the relationship as much as we can to make it the most sustainable. And it would certainly be better if we could add an economic component to the strategic and defense, which uh, you know, is also paralleling very strong people-to-people -people ties. You know, that aspect, I think we shouldn't ignore, continues to grow very substantially um, and may get even better in the years ahead. So uh, let's, let's get the economic point up to par with some of these other aspects which are going very well. Now there is also a perception that the US is actually slowly delinking from this part of the world. Mm. You know, you uh, have a great uh, push now for a peace deal with the Taliban in Afghanistan yeah. and the withdrawal of American troops. Yes. Um, for some reason the US also says India should put its troops into Afghanistan at a time when it's withdrawing, you know. Mm. So it's raised a lot of questions here, you know. How do you see this? Well, I, I have to say I don't think that there is a consensus in Washington at all um, for pushing for Indian forces in Afghanistan. Uh, that's been speculated about for some time and maybe there are some in the U.S. Who, who think that could be favorable, but my understanding is that's still a long ways away and there will not be a, a, a formal push to get Indian troops in Afghanistan. Um, I do think that Afghanistan is in some ways unique, that we shouldn't look at America's presence and interest in the Indo-Pacific through an Afghanistan lens. That is a, an isolated conflict. 
uh, where the U.S. has been at war now for almost 20 years. Yeah. And so President Trump has been uh, very open from the beginning that he would like to see U.S. troop withdrawals from Afghanistan. But I don't think that that uh, bears uh, on U.S. policy toward the Indo-Pacific more broadly, toward America's posture in, in Japan, in the Indian Ocean, in the South China Sea. In many ways, U.S. activities in these other areas are increasing. Uh, U.S. platforms, more advanced platforms, are being moved to the region. Uh, U.S. presence is growing in some Indo-Pacific countries. Uh, so I, I would try to divorce those two from one another. So what are we looking at this visit? What, what is it about? Is it about uh, Trump's you know, election thing further down the road? I, I, I don't particularly buy that argument that it's all about domestic politics at home. Uh, the Indian American population is, is significant, uh, although they do tend to vote Democratic very heavily. Uh, but the, the, the politics of it, the electoral math, doesn't suggest that President Trump appealing to the Indian vote will have a decisive impact on swing state elections in the presidential race. So I, I find it's a bit of a reach to suggest that this is all about domestic politics. The math just doesn't quite add up. Um, it's more about signaling uh, presidential time and commitment. You know, for the president of the United States to spend 30 hours on a yeah, plane it's a lot. to make one visit to a country yeah. uh, is a significant commitment of time for a president. And I think it was a, a signal uh, to the world that he does really value the India-U.S. relationship. And I was counting, uh, I think he's only made 18 trips abroad. And the vast majority of those were for multilateral summits. Yeah. Very, very few one-on-one -on -one state visits. And so uh, I think it's quite significant in its own right that he's coming, even if some of the deals that were speculated uh, don't get signed. Mm -hmm. There's a criticism that India has allied itself too closely with the Republican establishment in the, uh, in the US. Mm. And uh, this will go ill if uh, Trump perhaps loses the election. How do you see this? Well, there is, uh, I would say, more partisanship overlaying the India-U.S. relationship than there has traditionally been in the past. Um, and that's starting from a very low base. Yeah. So I don't think it's become a major issue. Uh, but I think you're right to recognize that there has been more criticism, at least of this government's policies, yeah. among Democrats in Washington than there have been among Republicans. And I don't think it's an India... U.S. issue. I think it's more sections of the Democratic Party have issue with the current government and its domestic policies. Um, and so that's in some ways a long way of saying if there is a Democrat elected uh, president this year, we could see a greater emphasis or attention on domestic policies in India, which um, could contribute to some friction in the relationship. I think it's important to recognize that that's a possibility. I don't think it's likely that that would end up uh, creating a large rift in the relationship or a break in bilateral ties, but potentially a slowing of momentum. Forward momentum is a real possibility and it will require uh, a little more outreach on both sides to improve understanding and, and cooperation. Um, so it's, I think it's a fair point. So last question, what are the big takeaway from this visit? Is there any big takeaway at all? Well, to be fair, uh, there have not been many defense sales during the Trump administration. Yeah. Uh, and that's partly a product of the fact that we picked a lot of the low hanging fruit in the 10 years before. Yeah. So most of the easiest and biggest defense deals were done right before President Trump took office. So I think it's natural there would be some drop off. Um, but there really haven't been many new defense deals until now. So the fact uh, that we're looking at at least two fairly large helicopter purchases and yeah. potentially some agreement on uh, taking forward missile defense cooperation, uh, I think those are quite significant. And as I pointed out in the beginning, uh, just the president making the time and commitment to come here and spend some time with Prime Minister Modi to bring a large team of very important cabinet officials and businessmen. I think that goes a long way towards strengthening the relationship in the end. Jeff Smith, thank you very much. It's good to see you again.